my name's Kim Chambers and I'm a great granddaughter of William Lyons. No one ever spoke about my great grandfather. I saw, always say it was like he didn't exist. Um, there were no photos out on display. Uh, and then when my great grandfather, he died in 1955, so I never knew him. And then my grandfather's uh, younger brother lived in the house. And then we moved him to a nursing home. And that was when dad wanted to nail the cupboard doors shut because he didn't want prying eyes looking at his grandparents' things. And he nailed the cupboard doors shut. The house was sold. The cupboards, still nailed, were taken down to my grandparents' house, which was empty at the time, on our family farm at Guru. And um, over the years, we'd go and have a look and pull things out and admire things. It was like a little antique shop, but we didn't realise the importance of what was in those cupboards. He actually went to Gallipoli and we didn't know that until I got his war records and I found the words Anzac Cove and I rang Dad up and I said, did you know your grandfather went to Gallipoli? And he said, I had no idea because he said he never spoke about the war. But he said, um, speak to my cousin Norma. Her husband had told her that grandfather had told him some of the really horrific things that he had experienced at Gallipoli, but he um, made him promise he'd never tell Grandma because they just weren't suitable for a woman's ears. Grandma used to tell Dad's cousin that he was always the life of the party before he went away to World War I. He loved to dance. He was always the last to leave the party. But when he come back, he was virtually an alcoholic. And, uh, and a lot of family stories are sort of funny stories, but they're sad also because it's related to what he got up to because he was always drunk. He joined the Mackay Mounted Infantry as a light horseman when he was 17 years old in 1890. He went away to the Boer War in 1899. And when he came back from the Boer War, he remained in the, the permanent forces. And then in 1914, when war broke out, he enlisted with the 5th Light Horse um, Regiment. This is a photo of the training camp at Inogra near Brisbane that the Light Horse were training before they left for the war. This is a guide. It's actually written by Charles Bean. It was a guide to um, Australian troops for Egypt, just everyday things. Sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> Advising to stay out of the brothels and um, not to drink the water, uh, just food and shopping, I guess, if you had time for shopping. <laughs> These are the badges off his uniform and this is the, like, the coat of arms for the fifth light horse. And there's other little um, buttons and things that would have been on his uniform at the time. For most of his military life, he was actually uh, in a, a light horse instructor and he was sent to the School of Instruction in Egypt. And his job was to instruct and train the men to send out to various battles. And then of course he was sent to Gallipoli when they dismounted the light horse. Well, this is one thing we found, is a little box of photos. There are snapshots taken in Gallipoli. It's the hospital ship off Anzac Cove. Just before leaving the ship, the Guildford Castle, one wounded man was killed and another wounded by Turkish shrapnel. Australian sisters were on board this boat. This is a dugout. Uh, another soldier in a dugout at Gallipoli. This is William on the uh, Oriana. He was evacuated from uh, Gallipoli in September 1915 and this is on his way back from England because he was sent to hospital in England. And this was a book on his regiment. Um, it's written by the colonel of the regiment of the 5th Light Horse and it was issued to 
the surviving members of the Light Horse in the 1920s. It, it details his arrival at Anzac Cove and other battles that they were involved in. I'm looking at his diary um, from 1917. On the 3rd of August, um, went out on a stunt um, with the 5th Light Horse to Scupper Bedouin outpost within five miles of Beersheba. We were fired upon by Turkish outpost, returned to camp without casualties. And then by the end of the year of 1917, he was actually ill and um, he had malaria. He suffered from migraines constantly. But in here he mentions when he was in hospital on the Sunday the 4th of November, the wounded are coming in from Beersheba fight. Our present camp, the 15th of the 6th, 1916. Unloading um, cartons of beer in the desert. Our regiment and part of the 6th at Serapum. The camel train was about a couple of miles long. My father doesn't remember him very well, but he craved knowledge. What Dad does remember is him and his cousin would come up from Guru and stay with their grandparents. And his grandfather by then, he lived in bed, he was, he was ill, and he'd keep a notebook beside his bed. And he'd have all these questions written on the notebook, and they would have to go off on their bikes around Townsville, this is in the 1950s, and find the answers. And uh, Dad said they rarely ever found the answers and recently I, I asked Dad what sort of questions um, were on his list and one was apparently on the old trains there were metal foot warmers and there was a substance inside them that would liquefy and keep your feet warm and he wanted to know what the substance was and anyway so Dad they never found out so I got on Google and I found out the answers to both. <laughs> I always say that um, Google would have been his best friend. <laughs>